But suppose the initial condition said that y of 0 were, were 1, for instance. Then the solution would be, so this is an if. I'm throwing in at the end just to make it a, a little bit more of a problem. How would I put, then I could evaluate the constant uh, by using the initial condition. What would it be? This would be on the left-hand side, 1. On the right-hand side would be c over 2. So I would get 1 equals c over 2. Is that correct? Cosine of 0 is 1, so that's 2 down below. Therefore, c is equal to 2, and that would then complete the solution. It would be x squared plus 2 over 1 plus cosine x. <clears throat> now, let's. Uh, you can do this in general, of course, and get a general formula. Uh, and we'll have occasion to use that next week. But for now, why don't we concentrate on the most interesting case, namely that of the linear equation with constant coefficient. That is, so let's look at the linear equation with constant coefficient, because that's the one that most closely models the conduction and diffusion equation. So what I'm interested in is, since this is the, of them all, probably it's most, the most important case is the one where p is a constant uh, because of its application to that. And, and many of the other, the bank account, for example, all of those would use a constant coefficient. So uh, how is the thing going to look? Well, I'll use the uh, cooling. Let's, let's use the temperature model, for example. The temperature model, the equation will be dt dt. Uh, plus kt is equal to, now notice on the right hand side, this is a common error, uh, you don't put te, you have to put kte uh, because that's what the equation says. Uh, if you think units, you won't have any trouble. Uh, units have to be compatible on both sides of a differential equation. And therefore, whatever the units were for capital kt, I'd have to have the same units on the right hand side which indicates I cannot have kt on the left of the differential equation and just t on the right and expect the units to be compatible. It's, that's not possible. So that's a good way of remembering that if you're modeling temperature or concentration, you have to have the k on both sides. OK, let's do. Now, a lot of this we're going to do in our head now because this is, uh, this is really too easy. What's the integrating factor? Well, the integrating factor is going to be the integral of k. The coefficient now is just k. p is a constant k. And if I integrate k dt, I get kt. And I exponentiate that, so the integrating factor is e to the kt. I multiply through both sides, multiply by e to the kt. And what's the resulting equation? Well, it's going to be, I'll write it in the compact form. It's going to be e to the kt times t, all prime. The differentiation now, of course, is with respect to the time. And that's equal to kt e, whatever that is, times e to the kt. This is a function of t, of course, the function of little time. Of, sorry, little t time. OK, and now finally, we're going to integrate. What's the answer? Well, it is e to the, so we're going to get e to the kt times t is, sorry, k little t, k times time times the temperature is equal to the integral of k T e, I'll put the, the fact that it's a function of t inside just to remind you, e to the kt. Uh, and now I'll put the arbitrary constant. Let, let's put in the arbitrary constant explicitly. So what will t be? OK, t will look like this, finally. It will be e to the negative kt. That's on the outside. Then you will integrate 
Uh, of course, the difficulty of doing this integral depends entirely upon how this external temperature varies. But anyway, it's going to be k times that function which I haven't specified, e to the kt plus c times e to the negative kt. Now, some people, uh, many in fact, and almost always in the engineering literature, uh, almost never write indefinite integrals because an indefinite integral is indefinite. In other words, this covers not just one function, but a whole multitude of functions which differ from each other by an arbitrary constant. So in a formula like this, there's a certain vagueness, and it's further compounded by the fact, I don't know whether to put the, arbit whether the arbitrary constant is here. I seem to have put it explicitly on the outside the way you're used to doing from calculus. Many people, therefore, prefer, and I think you should learn this, to do what is done in the very first section of the notes called definite integral solutions. They like, if, in, if there's an initial condition saying that the internal temperature at time zero is some given value, what they like to do is make this thing definite by integrating here from zero to t and making this a dummy variable. You see what that does is it gives you a particular function, whereas it was a, I'm sorry, I didn't put in the dt1, minus 2. What it does is that when time is 0, all this automatically disappears, and the arbitrary constant will then be, well, it's t, so in other words, c times this, which is 1, is then equal to t. In other words, if I make this 0, then I can write c as equal to this arbitrary starting value. Now, when you do this, the essential thing, and we're going to come back to this next week, but right away, that because k is negative, is positive, I wanted, since I emphasized that so, so much at the beginning of the period, I want to conclude by showing you what its significance is. This part disappears because k is positive, the conductivity is positive, this part disappears as t goes to zero. This goes to zero as t goes to infinity. So this is the solution that remains. This, therefore, is called the steady state solution. The thing which the temperature behaves like as t goes to infinity, this is called the transient because it disappears as t goes to infinity. It depends on the initial condition, but it disappears, which shows you that in the long run for this type of problem, the initial condition makes no difference. The function behaves always the same way as t goes to infinity.